They come and meet Shays. They say Shays has a sword drawn, he's got a pistol in his hand, and he says, surrender. And they say, never. They've got cannon in there, and they're willing to fight. Will they fire? They surely will. That is all I want. Shays gave the command, and his men began to march. March! William Shepard opens fire. First, he sends a, a volley of cannon grape shot over their heads. They keep on going forward. They get to within about 100 yards of the arsenal. They lower the cannon. They shoot right at the insurgents. Four rebels lay dead on the field, and 30 more were wounded. They first try to attack further, but then as they're getting hit, then they flee. They'll flee in all directions. The insurgents retreat and regroup. Eli Parsons of the rebel cause says, if it wasn't for that message that had been intercepted, and if they would have had three flanks going in, they would have taken the arsenal. Three days later, Shays regrouped his men, now over 40 miles away. Needing to communicate with his other rebel leaders, Shays sent a messenger with a call for help. The seeds of war are now sown. Our men are now bleeding. I request you to let this letter be read, and for you and every man to supply men and provision to relieve us with the reinforcement. We are determined here to carry our point. Our cause is yours. Don't give yourself a rest and let us die here, for we are all brethren. But Shay's plea for help was never answered. No one thought he could defeat Lincoln's army. After marching all night through a terrible blizzard, General Lincoln's men surprised Shay's fleeing army and captured 150 of them without incident. Shays managed to escape to Vermont, but small bands of his followers continued their attacks on Massachusetts courthouses. For all intents and purposes, the rebellion was over. Within a few short weeks, the 150 imprisoned rebels were sentenced to hang. Many appealed for leniency, and although Samuel Adams opposed it, 138 men were pardoned. The remaining 12 were marched to the gallows, their necks put in a noose, but a last-minute pardon spared their lives. Across the state, however, a separate group of three men weren't as fortunate. They were sentenced to be hanged for crimes associated with Shays' rebellion. And these sentences would be carried out. One of the government troops who had fought against the rebels, Captain Park Holland, eloquently summed up the State of the Union. I would observe that there are many things to be considered before we condemn the misled followers of Daniel Shays. Our government was a new, untried ship with many joints that needed oiling, to say the least, with no chart of experience to guide us, nor a map of the past by which to lay course. The prevalent feeling was that the new republic was unraveling. And that if something weren't done immediately, and something dramatic weren't done, that the United States, which was only a few years old, would disappear 